right, we're off and running again. Sorry, everyone. I'm just aware of the fact I was talking too much, so it gives you like a, a by doing the vids in shorter time. So you might have more videos, but it's supposed to make it easier for you. So, um, I hope the actual sound's working there, it seems to be. Right, so it says, sketch the graph of 3 to the x. So we know it's just a power graph, so it's going up, so it crosses a 1, and we've got an asymptote, so y is 0. So nothing new there. Uh, then it says, describe the transformations. So y equals 3 to the x plus 1. If you look, we've replaced x with x plus 1. So that must be a translation of minus 1, 0. Because the plus 1 is next to the x. So I go backwards on it. Uh, so we've got now, so y equals 3 to the power of 2x. So I've replaced the x with a 2x. So that must be a stretch parallel to the x-axis scale factor. Now if you remember, on the x-axis you do it upside down. I'm cramming twice as much graph into the same area, so I have to plot it half as far away from the y-axis. And then for the last one, I've got 6 multiplied by 3 to the x. You've got to be careful there, because what people do, they write it as 18 to the power x, which is just rubbish. You can't do that. It's not the same power. So please don't do that. So that's a 6 in front. It's multiplying all the y values by 6. So that's a stretch parallel to the y-axis. Scale factor 6 there. Right, so that's that example done. So that's quite nice and straightforward. Let's have a look at the next one. So it says the curve 3 times 2 to the x is translated by the vector 0 minus p. Okay, so that minus p just means I'm moving it p down, aren't I? So my new graph is 3 times by 2 to the x minus p. So it passes through the origin. So that's important, that. Because it's telling me if it passes through the origin that when x is 0, y is 0. So I've got 0 is 3 times by 2 to the power 0 minus p. And I can find p now because I've got the equation and I've got the coordinate point. Anything to the power 0 is 1. So I've got 3 lots of 1. Take p. So p must be 3. There. That's quite nice, that. that's quite straightforward. All I've done is use the information I've got. Right, come on, let's keep on doing this. Whew. Right, what have we got? Uh, so, gradient functions. So, what this is saying is you can, because you can graph on your graph the gradient function, and maybe we'll do that as well. So, if I've got 1 to the power x, the gradient is 0. If I've got 2 to the power x, I get that type of gradient. Um, and I can keep on going. And what I can do is, I can change this number here. I can fiddle with that number. Because when it's 3 to the x, so the gradient is a red line. So at 3 to the x, my gradient is above my graph, but at 4 to the x, whether that's still the same, I'll have a yeah, I want it closer, I don't want it like that, I actually know more what my thought, my thought process was going to be, I can tinker with the number, uh, but it's not, it's the 2 to the x and the 3 to the x, if you notice, on the this one between here and here, the 2 to the x and the 3 to the x, the gradient is below my graph, but the red line is below, but on the 3 to the x, my red line is above. And what I could do is I could try 
3.5 to the x, and then I could try 3.6 to the x. And I can keep on going, and what I can try and do is get the gradient graph on top of the original graph. And I can like zoom in and I can have it as 3.5 and 3.55. You know, I can just try and do that to make a better um, estimate for it. So the 2 to the x graph, the gradient's below. The 3 to the x graph, the gradient's above. So I want to try 2.5. Stupid. My head's a bit mashed. It's always like not doing much over Christmas. So I can try numbers between 2 and 3 to make it work. And I want to try and get it so the gradient graph is on top of the original graph. Because then that's quite special, that, to get something where my gradient graph is on top of the, my original graph. So that probably didn't make a lot of sense because my head's not worked, to be fair. So what it says, so as A increases, so there's a gradient function, somewhere between 2 to the x and 3 to the x, um, the gradient function is the same. So that's what I was looking on about. Uh, this number is roughly, if you kind of zoom in and keep trying it, it's around 2.718. Now we've got a magic letter pi. Now we've got pi. Pi is like a certain number that links the, you know, the, the radius to the circumference and to the area. But we have another number called e, the exponential function. And E is that number where it magically puts the gradient graph on top of the function graph. And that's really, really special for us. And we use that a lot. So this bit here is really, 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 really important to us. Since I've got my word here right, all my numbers wrong and everything going on there. So I've got exponential growth, which goes up and I have exponential decay. So I've got like a, a y equals e to the x, which just looks like the other power graphs we were doing. And I've got y equals e to the minus x, which is a power decay. Still going through one. Uh, so instead of having like 2 to the x or 3 to the x, I've got this e, which is a special number. That's all it is. That's all I'm trying to get to. Right, I might stop there and I'll do this on the next video.